believe that to help the AIDS patients in developing countries, we see that free AIDS drugs is the only way to go. So moving on, so moving on um, so we see that the problem in today's society is that 2.95 million people in Africa die of HIV. We see that there are 22.4 million people in Africa which have currently have HIV. And we see that the problem in today's debate is that these developing countries, they have a lack of money, which means that they can't get drugs because their, because their economy is not developed enough. And we see that that, what that problem leads to is more people getting AIDS, more people dying because of AIDS, and that is the very problem we see that it is in today's debate. So moving on to my definition. We define this house as developing countries. We define free as giving aid to those developing countries. So, so we see that in today's debate. So we see that in today's debate, we are going to provide to you a two-step model. On the first part of our model, the World Health Organization, we're going to let the World Health Organization buy the drugs and give it as aid to those developing countries. On the second part of our model, we're going to provide education to those people in the developing countries to build on awareness of these HIV, of the dangers of HIV. So, so moving on to my justification, we use the World Health Organization in this debate because we said it is the very goal of the World Health Organization because they target to achieve the MDG goal, the, the sixth MDG goal, which is to combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. And we see that the MDG, it is a world, it is a meditated leader on global health. And their goal is to adopt a role of social detrimental health policy. And that is why we see that the World Health Organization is the most capable actor in handling this problem. And we see that they have incentive to do this because they have already initiated a goal. And we see that another analysis on why the World Health Organization is going to do this. Because we see that the, there, well, there is another MDG, which was to help and begin how and, and begin to reverse the incidence of tuberculosis by 2015. And we see that that is another disease. And the World Health Organization has started to do it. And that is why we see that AIDS should, that AIDS should be started by the World Health Organization. We see that we should start attacking the problem. We should start to start solving the problem. We should see that those people in the developing countries are suffering. And, and then we're, when we're talking about these companies, where the World Health Organization is going to buy the drugs from, we see that it does not hurt these companies at all. Because we see that these companies, they still are going to get money because the World Health Organization is going to buy drugs for them. And we see that, it, we see that they have incentive because they are profit oriented. They're not going to care, but if they get money, they're still going to do this. And, and then we see that these people infected, they want, they want this. They want this policy to be made. Because we see that those people, they want to get treated. What they want to do is to get rid of, um, to get treated by HIV. Because they see that they do not have enough money. They see that the developing countries do not have enough money to provide to them the, to, to provide to them the, the AIDS drugs that they need. To buy the AIDS drug that they need in the first place. So, so moving on to my split. I'm going to talk about how giving AIDS as as, as a to developing countries will increase the living standards of those people. And my second speaker is going to talk about how without this policy, it is only going to lead to a cycle of harms at the end of the day. So, move, so before I move on to the UI. How is it possible for a World Health Organization to buy eight drugs and provide it to every single hospital in the developing nations? We see that it is a principal debate, ladies and gentlemen. And we see that what we are doing, we are targeting those people who are currently suffering from HIV and AIDS, what side opposition? If you're not doing this, what you're doing is not caring about those people. We say that we care about those people. Those people don't have enough money to go and buy their AIDS drug. That's why they currently suffer. That's why they currently are dying because of that. So moving on to my argument about the how about about the short term benefits. We said by giving aid, we said those developing countries are too weak to depend on their own. They need aid right now. They need aid to combat this problem. And we see that in today's debate, life is more important than money. We see that we should prioritize life. We said, we said, we said because people are dying, we should give assistance for free. We see that we should protect those lives of the people. And we said by giving aid, it will help them. We're 
giving AIDS drugs to help treat those people in the developing countries. And when the government sees that AIDS, the AIDS drug is given to them, they we said they, what they are going to do is start seeing that their people are, um, are being treated. And when those people are being treated, we say we are going to solve the problem. We're going to solve the problem. Um, we're going to try to solve the problem in, um, in the short term. And we said on the second level of analysis, on the long-term benefit, we said that we are also going to give education to them. And we see that this is because the root of the problem in today's debate about how these people get HIV is because they don't know about the danger at all. We see that they don't have enough education because, of, because they are in developing countries where education is not there, where they barely get basic education. And that's why we have to provide education to them about AIDS so then they can know more about the risk of getting. And we see that this is true about how they don't know about AIDS. Because we said 8% of women in Africa, only 8% know that HIV is dangerous. That means that 92% don't know about it. 92% have a risk of getting it because they don't know about the disease. And that is why we have to educate them. We have to educate them so they know about the dangers. So then they know that it is bad. So they can start treating themselves. So we see that the problem in today's debate is because they don't have enough money and also the second problem about they don't have enough education. And we say that that's why we we are going to let the World Health Organization um, regulate this. We are going to let those let the World Health Organization buy the drugs from those companies. We don't see how it's going to hurt the, com the drug companies at all because we say that they still get money. We are going to help the people in those developing countries. We are going to fulfill the role of the World Health Organization. We are going to solve the goal of the LGBT to solve the problem of HIV and AIDS. That is why we, on side proposition, believe that we should give AIDS drug, free AIDS drugs to those developing countries. Thank you. Of the government case here. We concede on the fact that people are dying, so many people are dying and they are in dire need of help. But in the end of but we also think that this is not only a principal debate but also a policy debate. Why do we think so? Because first of all, it's a principal debate, obviously if the government can come up with lots of perfect morality ground, but they cannot apply it to reality, how can it be how can it be applied? How how can that be how can that help the people in the end of the day if government has such a strong moral stance but they cannot apply it in reality? So moving on to my arguments, but to bring on to my rebuttals. My rebuttal is uh, the first thing is to attack the mechanism on the idea that World Health Organization will buy these AIDS drugs to them and also they will give the people for free. We do not think that this. First of all, we they, we think that that should not be the case. Why? Because for, first of all, these people, those researchers, work so hard to get the AIDS to get the AIDS cure. They work so hard, they work twenty four seven and. In the end of the day, you're going to reward them with nothing. You're going to reward them with that if in the end of the day since in the, in the end of the day we see that there will be no right going to them. So in the end of the day, how is it principally right in the end if you are going to give the money to one people but not to another people? So also we think that that cannot happen because first of all we see that there are too many people in there are too many people in developing nations just, like, just what they have said, millions of people are dying so I'm going to give millions of aid drugs to all of these people in every day we think that that is not the case that shouldn't be the case where government wasted where government invested so billions of dollars for these people and also we think that hospital do not cooperate on their mechanism. Why? Because these hospitals, they cannot earn that much profit. In the end of the day, they, they will not get the co cooperation from this hospital. And also, there are too many hospitals in today's society, in developing nations. We see that in the end of the day, we do not think that who, even though they have such a strong initiation, will have that enough incentive to buy all millions of aid drugs for millions of hospitals in developing nations. And also, even if they even if the mechanism works so perfectly, we still think that that shouldn't be the case. Why? Because the value of money is so important in today's society. People have the mentality that they have to work hard, they have to work hard, they have to earn this money for themselves, for the future. And I will be talking about this in my argument. So our our counter proposal is that we are not going to do it free, but in the end of the day, we're going to give these drugs to the people and with a good teacher and no free and also if we are going to check whether or not they are these are in dire or if they really need it if they are in the case that they are going to die even any they are going to die in a very immediate case we are going to allow them to aid allow them to use aid drug and also allow them but however in the end of the day they must be community service in return for the government.
So my speech is that I will be talking about the value of money and the mentality of people towards today's society. And my DPA will be talking about the my idea of will be talking about the practical harm of the government case and also the practical benefit of our case. So first of all, my argument is that Point, by making such a valuable product in today's society free, it will change it will change it will exert a negative impact to society. My first thought though is that why should nothing be free in the first place? So it will be about the value of money. First of all, when we talk about money, we talk about the sacred resource that people have to work so hard 24-7 throughout their childhood. They have to invest so much money, they have to invest so much money in their childhood just to make sure that when they grow up they are able to earn this money and to earn their living in a society. And we see that these people are having the right technology. What do you mean by this? We see that because they think that everything has a cost. Meaning, no matter what, in the end of the day, they have to work for these resources. They have to work hard, they have to spend their effort, they have to have this effort and incentive to do well. They have an incentive to do well because they know that in the end of the day, if they don't do well, they will not be rewarded with these products. They know that in the end of the day, they will not be rewarded. They will not be receiving the things that others might be receiving because they are both hard. So we see that this is the mentality that is an integral part in developing nations such as Africa, so that people, so that because every person is an integral part, is a significant and very important part in the developing nation because everyone can contribute so much to the country. We see that by giving this mentality, keep standing, by giving them the mentality that you have to work hard, you have to have. We have that, you have to work hard for to get what they want. We can see that we can maximize the amount of contribution that these people can contribute to the society. So before moving on to the okay, before moving on. We say that our benefits are not mutually exclusive because we said our case is very almost the same. But you don't care about the people who are infected already. You're just going to care about the people who are going to die. And we say that you're not upholding the moral high ground in today's debate. We say that in this case, it is very important for the government to look at the long run benefit. It is very important for the government to see that if we don't act now. If we act now, for example, we see that no, people protest all the time. When they do not, when the price of a product rise, they protest all the time. But sometimes it is important that the government cannot buy this product. They cannot buy, they cannot decrease the price of this product. Why? Because they know that these products are so valuable and people have to work for it. And by allowing them, giving them these such a valuable product to these people for free, we retain an extremely strong and beneficial and beneficial mentality of the people to a negative we're going to tell them now that now that if you have AIDS now we will cure you for free. No matter what, no matter how expensive stuff is, in the end of the day you will get a stuff for free. And which in the end of the day we we call a slippery slow. What do you mean by this? We will in the end of the day we will not be aware of the AIDS, we will not be aware of this disease. We, when they are with their goal is they are trying to make sure people are aware. But in the end of the day they're going to make sure that people are not going to aware. What do you mean by this sir? Because in the end of the day they will know that even though if they're going to have AIDS, they will, the government will help them anyway. They know that even though that how much how severe the disease is in the end of the day, the government will support them economically. So in the end of the day they are not going to help the people, but in the end of the day they're going to put a wrong, wrong mentality to the people say that you do not, you do not need to work hard, you do not need to put in effort in order to in order to get the product, in order to earn your reward. And the second salary is that why egg drops are not free. Because first of all, we see that egg drops require such a high technology which is so expensive in the developing nation and also in today's society. We see that these technologies need the money, need the investment, they this at least they need the investment for people to develop into a third, to develop and to allow people to do more research on these drugs. For them to be able to find a further Further development on how to cure this disease. We see that it is important for hospital and medical field to be able to have this support economically from the government and also from the people. So to summarize my speech, I have to put to you that the value of money is great, is an extremely important part in society. It is extremely important for the government to make sure that the mentality of the people in today's society stays strong. It is important for the people to go to make sure that people work their best, to maximize their contribution to society by Putting, because the incentive, they have an incentive to do well in order to earn the living, in order to earn the products that they need for their life. And also we have proven to you that AIDS drugs are not free because the technologies are so expensive that money must be, must be invested and people who do research must be rewarded in the end of the day. So therefore we are proud to oppose. Thank you. We believe that to tell the AIDS patient in a double of fever, Free aircraft is the only way to go. Before I move on to my argument, please allow me to give the opposite and main for rebuttal. The for rebuttal against their own me mechanism, against their own mechanism that it is their private 
that benefit is a magnitude increase for us. Why? Because first of all, they are going to give a free free aid to patients as well as that, but they are going to give to the one that are going to die soon. We see and we see and we can see to the point that if and only if we're going to give to the person who are going to die. How about the person who actually suffer from AIDS? We see that there are more than 22.4 million people in Africa suffer from this from this from this disease, and we see that the the big UK or World Health Organization is the only actor who is capable of doing this action. The second rebuttal against the idea of how they're going to make government be the one to regulate and give the aid grant to the patient. We say on the principle level, if you actually thought that the big UK the big UK or World Health Organization is the one who cannot do it, how can the government of the big old old country can do it? If the American government doesn't have enough money, how? of the developing nation have enough and it's free question to answer this question. Mm -hmm. On the practical level, get the idea that we see that if we go with the government regulation, we see for many points that the government from the, the Africa country actually leads to the corruption. Why? Because if we, we actually let them let them regulate and, and let the development you can go far away from, from this thing, we see that at the end of the day no no one will actually solve this problem. And even if it is not the case, we see that the, the one who, who can solve this problem, and even the one who can solve this problem is the big UK, the big World Health Organization. Move on to the third battle against the idea that they are tapped about how researchers still not, didn't get money, but we see on the principal level that researchers get money. Why? Because the big UK has okay the company, and then the, the company pay the researcher for research for a new job. So we see a clear link that the researcher, the one who researched a drug for many years, will not get that in effect. But due to the, the, the problem of the of the proposition side, we question them again. How can how can the mechanism work? Because actually the developing nation government does, doesn't have enough money. Uh, even if and uh, even if it is um, on the public level, we see a, a few contradiction in their own case. Why? Because they actually told us that researcher works so hard, so we should not give anything as a free. But they all they are the one who actually give it as free as well. But they actually by two different sides. The, um, the only clear thing that are different from our side, the government side and the opposition side, is that we are going to give the one who need it. We are going to give one everyone who suffer from the AIDS. Because we see on the principle that they, these people need to live in this world because they have the right to live in this world. To, to live in their world. So even if it is not, if, even if it is not the case and researchers still not think get money, we see that first of all we see two class points between money and life. Which one do you prioritize more? Money or life? We see that in today's debate, we need to prioritize the, the right, the life of the people who live in, in a poor, harshly condition more than the money from the, the, the thing that the opposition has proposed to us today. On the fourth floor, we to get the idea that the talk tell that no, nothing in this world are free. Okay, on the principle level, nothing in this world are free. But we see that, yeah, we can see the point that the, the people in the developing country don't have to have enough education. Because they don't have enough education, we give them education. So at the end of the day, they will have, they will know how to work, they will know how to get better. And we see actually on the practical level, against the idea that you don't never attack us. How about people who never educated about more, um, eight point, only 8% of African women know what is the harm of AIDS. 92% of them don't, don't, don't know what is the harm. We can see on, we see on this point that the opposition take never solve anything and lead to more harm at the end of the day. And before I uh, move on to my argument, my argument is about how not giving any aid and freedom will lead to the cycle of harm. On the, on the, um, because in the principle level, we believe that people in this world, born in, in this world, should have this world right to access to the aid. But people in the developing country that suffer, why? Because they don't have, they don't have enough education. They, they need work. And we see that at the end of the day, if this, this country doesn't get, if this country doesn't get anything, they cannot stand by their own feet. We see on, on, the, on, 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 move on to my first level of substantiation uh, uh, um, about how not giving at the, at the very first, make 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 make, make and strongly harm. We, we, we question the opposition side that why are you going to give aid to the people who actually going to die? We see that we see okay, it's okay for giving to the people who are going to die. We do it so as well. But we see that it is more it is actually important to give the people to give the aid 
algebra to the person who try to fight and try like the key person who try to fight to lead away from from the disease as well. And we see that on the on this point, if you actually give to the people who actually going to die, these people may die. All the obvious people may die, and not no no not, not, not no people, no person in the developing world who actually can solve and can fight with this problem. Move on to the second level, how giving them education and at, at the same time with aid lead to the lead to the strong, stronger benefit. Because we see that if education gives it into their hand, they know how they can produce. They know how, how can how can they can they can work. We see from many points that if um, the World Trade Organization uh, impose the idea of free trade into the African country. Why? Because they need, to, they want to help this country to grow up to be stronger. And we see on the same point that this is why the WHO or World Health Organization need to go there and help these people as well. Because, because um, the very core principle of World Health Organization is to lead people away from the guilt and to make sure that no, uh, and to make sure that we can decrease the chance of people who get affected by the disease. On the second level of substantiation, against the, I against the idea um, of the second level of substantiation, how education to, how education will lead to the better society in the developing country. We see that when people all around in the African country get get better education, the 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 the, the head of the family can go and can work and can increase more income into the country, into the family themselves. But if we didn't give them anything, give them give them only the aid freedom to only the person who going to die, nothing will go not gonna so happen happen and nothing in this uh, and nothing in the developing country will be better. So at the end of the day we believe that in order to solve, solve this problem, in order to make sure that the people in the developing country get a better life, we need to go with an A drop as an A. Thank you very much. Else. The motion for today is that this house believes that age drug should be free. Before moving on to my rebuttals, I would like to state my team stance. My team stance for this house is nothing in the world, um, the, for example, this situation is free and will lead a negative impact to society. Moving on to my rebuttals, I have two rebuttals to state today. My first rebuttal is that they said that the researchers will get the money. But how will the researchers get the money if nobody is going to pay the government um, for the AIDS drugs? Um, my second rebuttal is that they question us and go and say how the developing country have not have not enough money. But we're going to give these people uh, these people who severely need it and is going to die, and that is different from giving everybody in the entire world who has AIDS. The probability is totally different. Moving on to my argument, my argument for today is that by allowing drugs, uh, aid, uh, drug aid to be AIDS drug to be free, it will lead on a negative effect on the society. Moving on to my practical, my uh, the practical harm of yeah, please. Um, um, talking about religious view, um, the religious view, they don't allow them to have sex, um, like for example Christianity, they don't allow them to have sex. And also, and also parents and teachers will be oh, one yeah. teaching the students. And it would lead a bad reputation to the family or the parents that they are not teaching the child the right thing, getting AIDS. Also, the USA is investing so much money on this situation and it's still, it's still not working. The root of this problem um, is that they don't know the, what, uh, the, the real value of money and they're just going to give um, free uh, drug aids. And therefore, we are going to teach them the value of money. And by doing this, people are therefore going to work hard and when people work hard, they'll be contributing to society to their fullest potential and oh, yeah. therefore when people have their money they will be able to afford these eight drugs to the country also the people who have worked 24 7 finding a cure will not have the money there will be no money to pay for them they cannot support oh, yeah. their own family and, and they will have no jobs in the end moving on to the practical benefit the practical benefit of not making it free is that people will finally realize the value of money. Um, they, they will create an incentive to work hard and therefore they can earn their own money to support their entire family and live 
in a health, healthy environment. And people will then realize that when you work hard, you will get rewarded. Every time in life, when you work hard, you will get rewarded for everything you do. And as I stated before, when we when you contribute to the society, uh, you will lead to the fullest potential in the society, and therefore the society will be. My next level is that instead of making it free, as my PM said, they have to contribute to the society. Uh, we are going to let them do community service or help out in the society, get jobs and everything, um, so that they will be able to uh, help out the society. Not only will they get cured by the, uh, not only will they get cured, they will also be. Before you move on, they will also be. Um, contributing to the society. And in the end, um, if everybody will put an effort to make a change in this society, and then this is how the people are going to pay back to society, the, the government. Yes. Well, your entire argument was about how these people and have religious view, how is it going to have bad reputation? Well, we question your side. How are you going to prevent these people from having bad reputation? Because your model does not have education. Your model does not promote awareness at all. But, um, but in our case, we are going to be giving, well, when they get this um, uh, drug aid, uh, we will be asking them, uh, they will have education, they will be contributing back to the society, and when that happens, the reputation will increase, and they will also be contributing back to the society by doing community service. Even if they don't have education, they, you see road sweepers on the, floor, uh, on the road all the time. They're also contributing to the society. Um, um, the scientists, parents and teachers, Students uh, and children will be participating in this debate. The scientists will be participating in this debate is because they'll be working 24 7 to find a cure for this uh, for this AIDS. And also, um, if um, if they don't have money, they won't be able to support their own family and live in a healthy environment. The parents and teachers would also be con uh, part of this debate. It's because the people would assume that they're they're teaching their child the wrong thing. And also, um, when the, par the parents and teachers, even um, the parents, even if they they can't support their child to go to uh, go have education, that's why they are going to be working as road sweepers or any way to contribute to society, to earn money to give their child an education. The students and children would uh, want, they they want to go to school, they want to support their own family. See, um, if those people, they don't have three meals a day, do you really think that they don't want to go, uh, go to school and work hard so that they can contribute to society and earn money? Uh, the benefits of our case is that um, the, these students or ch their children, they would, uh, they would be contributing to the society and then they would learn the value of money, which is very important in this world. So, um, when by allowing AIDS drug to be free, it will lead a negative effect on the society because uh, the USA already has invested so much money on this, but it's still not working. And also, the people who are working 24 7 to find a cure, they won't be getting their money to support their family. And also in our case, we're going to teach the people the value of money as the value of money is very important in this world and it creates an incentive to work hard in this society for the future benefits. So, um, nothing in this world, um, but this situation is free and only a negative impact on society. Thank you.
give them education to the people so that they can prevent more uh, more infections that happen because the people don't know the harms and uh, the harms of the AIDS and how it, uh, how it uh, transfer from people to people. And moving on to my flash point, I have three flash points to present you today. The first one is the WTO was the government who is more capable. The second one is who, who is having more life. And the third one is who can bring forth more development in the country. And moving on to my first flash point, which is uh, the capability of the new NGO versus the government. We see that on the first issue. The government is not a capable actor. And why? We see that because we have already said to that, that this house means the developing countries. And we see that the, the, the government of the develop, developing countries, they are poor and they sometimes have a problem of dictatorship. So we see that currently they are not in the status of actually coming and helping their own people. They cannot go out and buy these drugs which are very expensive and give it to the people which is what the government is doing. So we see that actually um, they, they come up and attack, attack us on a disability level but we see that their model is less feasible. And moving on to my second issue which is the WHO is more capable and has more incentive. We see that firstly the WHO has a goal to combat HIV so therefore they have the incentives to actually come in and help these people who cannot help themselves. So, um, uh, that will create the incentive for the new, the new actual to actually come to the country and buy the drugs for them. And secondly, they are more capable because they are, firstly, they, they got the money from many organizations and countries. So therefore, at the end of the day, if they come up and attack us at the feasibility level, we are we question you this. What, who is going to be uh, who is going to be more capable? The government of the developing country who is poor and sometimes has a dictatorship problem, or the US or the WHO, the international organization who aims to combat HIV. We see that at the end of the day, we are the one who provides the more feasible models. And we see that, that is more feasible that is feasible because the WHO has once worked on the on our tuberculosis by giving them aid, and we see that 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 uh, that was successful. So we see that they can actually do this for AIDS too. So we have to my second class right, which is who is having more lives. And on the first issue, the opposition is giving the drugs to the dying people. We see that that has already been too late. Because how can you make a criteria to actually accept the drug from the opposition, ladies and gentlemen? You have to be dying first. But we see that that is too late anyway. And they come up and um, proposing, you, uh, proposing an argument about the people um, don't recognize the value of the money, but we see that they are recognizing the value of the money themselves because they are dying, ladies and gentlemen. And what they cannot do is that they cannot purchase a drug to save their life. So they are recognizing the value of the money at the end of the day. And the opposition comes up and actually say that these, um, these patients actually have to contribute to the society to giving back to the society, but we see that that is not feasible also because they are dying. How can you make a dying people actually work for the society? That is an absurd idea, ladies and gentlemen. And moving to my second issue under this last point, which is giving drugs and education for small life. Firstly, we say that it says small life in short term, uh, short term, term, short term because uh, for the dying people, we are giving them drugs. We are giving them uh, something that they actually cannot purchase themselves. So we are saving the lives in the short term level. And on the second and the long term level, we are giving them education. The opposition so far have, has not tackled on this problem. So we see that um, the education point is substantial. We see that once the people learn about uh, the HIV, they can actually understand more of the, uh, uh, of the disease and they can actually uh, avoid it or prevent it as much as possible. And moving on to my third touch point, which is who can bring forth more development in the countries. And we see that first. The, uh, we are talk, we're going to talk about the research, the, the researchers in the company. We see that these researchers, that uh, actually the benefits to the researchers on, uh, the, on, on their model is not mutually exclusive from our models. Because why? They have come up and argued that the researcher will actually lose the incentive to actually develop a new drugs. But we are not taking the drugs from the, from the free ladies and gentlemen. We are going to pay them and buy them. So at the end of the day, we see that the, re the researchers will still have the incentives to develop the drugs more. And moving on to my second issue, which is where there will be more development in the developing countries. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest problem for the developing countries 
from one of them is that the people are dying. So we see that by saving these people's lives, we are actually um, helping these developing countries solve the problem. And we see that that is the first step to the development of the developing countries. And at the end of the day, we are, we are the one who actually helps them develop the, these developing countries and move them forward. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, two million deaths have already from it and 33.4 million are living with HIV now. So that is why we see that there are there's a dying to actually give these people in the developing countries uh, drugs to HIV. And 2.7 million with new infection uh, occurs each year. So we see that that is the dying to actually give them education to decrease the these, problems, these numbers. 51% percent people in Africa actually live under the COVID-19. So we see that there's actually a line for uh, the review and show to actually steps in and help these people. So we see that at the end of today, um, let me summarize my speech. So for my first my first touch point is the new SO versus the government. We see that at the end of today, the new SO is the more capable actor because they are the international community, that uh, they are an international organization that uh, don't have the that don't have dictatorship problem. And at the end of the day, we believe that the only way to actually save these li the life of these people is to give the aid to these people. Thank you very much. Very, 
this is very important and it is needed by everyone. But then the government is keeping them for free without any exchange. But in our mechanism, we are saying that they will, they should do social, uh, social service afterwards. Um, so when this year, free people will request for other other aspects which should be free from the government. But at the same time, we believe that they should be an um, exchange. that on our side, we are going to do the long-term problem too. Because we see that we are providing education, we are promoting awareness, and we have already given, given proof that 8% of women in Africa don't know about the dangers of pain. But in this case, um, in our case, is that, oh, in this debate, it's not the engage of idea of education, but then we choose to focus this debate into teach people to know the value of money. And then the value of money will teach everyone because, like, what what
we in to other homey base my DP, my DL already has given you the reason of why we are not engaging on the on the idea of education. Because we see that it is already happening now. We see that US has already invested so much money in the education of Africa of de developing countries such as Africa and that we see that it can be we can we see that it is good but still we have to take a different approach in order to solve the root of the problem of today debate is that people do not see the real value of the money. So first of all let's take a step back from this debate and look at this debate at a clear picture. So what are the questions that must be answered in today's debate? Is the responsibility of the WHO solely based on the idea of helping people in any circumstances or it can be manipulated for the future benefit of the society? First of all, the government case, they stand for that the WHO must help people in any circumstances without any consideration, without thinking that whether or not it will affect these people indirectly in the future. They do not take any concern about harm. Whether or not they do affect them, but under our case, we see that the, menu, the idea of the new HO can be manipulated for the betterment, for the better behavior, and for the better mentality of these people. We see that under our case, we're making sure that we have already proven to you that the man, the value of money must be must be taught to these people. We must show that the value of money is very strong, and there's this mentality of people that thinking that they must work hard to get to be rewarded. They must earn. Everything has a cost and that they must earn it through their effort is the right mentality for developing countries and that is an integral part for their development. And we also see that under our case, we are not giving them things for free because we know that this disincentivize them to work harder. Why? Because we already proven to you that if, in, if people have, uh, receive things for free without any earning through their hard effort or anything, they will think that in the future they will still, in the end of the day, receive these products. So, in the end of the day, these people, they will have the mentality and not knowing the reason of working and putting the effort in earning this money in the first place. So, and also, moving on to the next question is that under which house is the society better off? Under their case, they are going to help, just like what, I, just like what we already have been proven to you. They are going to have millions of people providing, providing millions of air drops that we already say that it is not feasible with the chair. And also we see that under their case, people will not know the value of money. We, we have already proven to you, under their case, people will not... People, in the end of the day, people will think that in the end of the day, if they have AIDS or if they earn any disease, in the end of the day, these computers or the government will help them instead. So in the end of the day, we see that there is such a slippery slope that is going on in the case and we see that it is going to affect these people indirectly in the future. Why? Because we have already proven to you that by doing so in the future, these people will think that in the end of the day, if they have it, they will still be weaker. So they will not see any reason for being aware in the first place. Even if they are aware, they will not be aware to the fullest potential. They will not be aware to the fullest of the effort of them knowing that it is harmful. Because in the end of the day, they know that even though it's harmful, the government will still help me. And also, but how under our case, we need to make sure that these people know that not only really know the real importance of, not only really know the real, real harm of it, it through the education that is already happening now, and we are going to make sure that these people don't get this idea that no matter what they do, no matter bad, what, how bad their behaviors are, the government is going to support them. Because in the other case, we stand for the idea that in the end of the day, people must earn their living. People have to make an effort in order to receive the reward, and therefore we are proud to oppose. Thank you. We say you not, should not teach these people with the risk of their lives at the end of the day. And that is why side proposition in today's debate believe that we should help those aid, aid victims in those developing countries. We should give aid drugs as an aid to those people because we see that those people are suffering at the end of the day. So moving on to the first issue in today's debate. On the first issue, are those our researchers benefiting or not? Because we said this is, is an issue which side opposition has been debating throughout the whole debate. And we said we have already proven to you that those researchers, the people who work so hard to get the drugs to research, we still see that they get income because the companies, they are going to get income from the World Health Organization which is buying the drugs from those companies. So we don't see how your analysis on how these research, researchers are going to not benefit from this is, is uh, actually false. And we still see that they, this, this, they are, these researchers, they're not going to lose 
their incentive. They're not going to do anything. We still see that they get money at the end of the day. So moving on to the next second issue. Which side is helping the AIDS victim and upholding the moral high ground? Because we see it in today's debate, we have to help the AIDS victims. We have already pro proven to you how these AIDS eight victims are suffering, how they are dying in developing countries. And we have already stated the problem from the start that those people in the developing countries cannot afford the AIDS drug. We said their countries cannot afford it. That is exactly why we are making the World Health Organization sell, um, buy the drugs from those drug companies and give it as aid to them, give it as aid to those victims. And we see that they are not acknowledging the problem from the start. Because we said their mechanism is entirely about how the government should go and buy drugs and give them free, and give the free drugs to the people. We already told you the government does not have money. And we said we still and we said if the government doesn't have money, how are you solving the problem at the end of the day? We said your mechanism is not feasible at the end of the day. Well our mechanism, we already told you how the World Health Organization has incentive, how they have to fulfill the MDG role to solve the problem, to so treat the problem and solve the problem of the HIVs and AIDS. And we said on how they attacked us, on how we're not going to solve the problem, we still see that we are reducing the problem. We are giving those AIDS drugs to those people, to the people who are victims, to the people who, who, who have AIDS, who are, and we still see that our cases are not mutually exclusive because we see that they have only, only said that they are going to give it to people who are dying. But we don't see how they are upholding the moral high ground. We are giving it to all the AIDS victims. And we said at the end of the day, we are reducing the problem and side opposition is not. And moving on to my third issue, how, how which side is promoting awareness? Because we said side opposition has been accusing us on how we are not benefiting benefiting the long term. We have already provided to you to our model that we are going to let the World Health Organization provide education, how it is going to promote awareness to those AIDS victims in the developing countries. And we see, still see that how, and, and, then, and then the deputy leader opposition argument came entirely about religious views, about how they teach people not to have sex. If that is your argument, if that is what you stand for, how are you promoting education? How are you promoting awareness at the end of the day? And we still say that we question them at the end. And how are you going to provide education? They just came and said that they are going to ask the people who are dying and they're going to provide education and make them have social service. Is that really educating them, ladies and gentlemen? We see that 8% of African women don't know about it. And that is why we say that to, in order to solve the problem, we have to promote awareness. We have to prioritize the value of lives more than money at the end of the day. So that's why we believe that we should help the AIDS victims all 